So, first things first, for the most part today, we'll probably be in mud and ruts mode. And the terrain response, like you've seen straight away me changing it, it means that when I take off, it's always going to be in four-wheel drive mode. It's turned on this, which is called the hill descent control. If you push buttons, you found it's here too. So you have manual control or you have it as part of the package here. And what it actually does is if you look at my dash here, I've got the green bar, yeah. a green arrow and a white arrow. Yeah. The green bar just represents where the speed is. The green arrow, I can adjust that with my cruise control buttons and that's my targeted speed, okay? okay? And the white arrow is my actual speed. The hill descent control is for any time you're trying to go down a hill, okay? So, I approach a hill, all four wheels are straight, my car is straight, because at a certain point here, I go absolutely blind. I have no idea where the trail is anymore, I don't know what's in front of me, so I need to know that I've got a good line for it, now I'm driving it by memory. As you can hear from the car, I'm on the power, I'm holding this here, but I'm not moving forward. If I need to, I just squeeze a little bit more power out, and I hold it very, very steady, and it just crawls forward. And then as you see the nose start to come up and over the crest, all of this power that I've used to climb would normally translate to speed at this point, wouldn't it? So that's why I'm just a little bit on the brakes. Don't worry about that. I know our clearance is low, especially when we're four, four full guys in the car. So now I'm on the brakes instead of the gas. I'm creeping forward. I can see where my trail goes now. So now I have steering control. And the hill you have to steer and control. Yeah. Well, now I can turn yeah, yeah. the wheel. He just right? couldn't see where he was going. That's yeah. why you have to go yeah. straight. Yeah, that's <laughs> In the real world, if you're driving up that, please get out and check what's on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> But out here, it's just it's to show you guys that if you can't see where you're going, you shouldn't be steering the wheel for no reason. Yeah. At this point, I can steer. If you have a Jeep, you probably have the same same thing, right? It's a dead man switch. So no brakes, no gas, and this is the car pulling me down the hill at this speed. It will go at that speed no matter what kind of angle I'm actually on. Here I have the whoop de doos We have great names for stuff out here, please don't laugh at me. This is where we practice the two foot driving. So again, like you can see, I'm going up to about 1200, I'm on the brakes, and then I hold the RPMs very, very steady there, and it's all just about the brake control to keep me moving forward at the same, same speed the whole time. If I don't use the brakes, you see it becomes faster, you feel that suspension dip, and out here, the suspension dipping, it's not that big a deal because all these obstacles are designed for these cars. But in the real world, when your suspension goes down, that's when you touch, that's when you bang, that's when you break something, is basically it. So it's always about how much control you have, and that's why I'm pushing that idea. The brake is your control, the gas pedal just keeps you moving forward. Side tilts. There will almost always be tire marks in front of you. That's a good place to start because we gotta find out what kind of traction we have, how the obstacle's feeling, things like that. And as long as the car isn't still in front of you on the obstacle, it means that guy got through as well safely in that line. And then as you can see, I'm just, I'm steering it nice and smooth. Here we have a wheel up in the air. So I'm just using the brake to control that transition. If you wanna have a look, open that back door actually and have a look. And you'll see that the wheel really yep. is... It's about uh, eight <laughs> inches off the ground. <laughs> I'll actually, I'll get you guys out of the car for the next set of obstacles so you can see it from the outside. And there again, once you're on the side tilt, wheel straight. Never, ever, ever turn uphill because that's the danger of rollover. If you don't like what's happening, all you got to do is turn downhill and you see the car follows the change direction, no problem. I'll try to go to the right. <laughs> if you go right, that's where the danger of roll over, of tipping and rolling over comes oh, in. That, that's not strong enough. <laughs> it's a far walk back to <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so guys, here is St. Catherine Street from downtown Montreal, as you can see. It has just been freshly repaved. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the <laughs> one, guys, and actually get out the car to have a look at it from the outside. I'm going to have you guys drive through it and stuff, yeah. but from the out... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without it. <laughs> wow, look how 
it is. Yeah. Well, it's, it's designed, right? Yeah. It won't do any more than this, this without is, damaging stuff. Yeah. This works. Every day you can do this and that generally not damage vehicles. Exactly. <laughs> when you go beyond that limit, that's where the damage comes in and honestly guys, I would rather not find something out for the first time with you here. Yeah. Whereas I know that I can come through here no problem at all. It's all just about how smooth you can make it. Like right here, you see I'm really challenged. Yeah. This is Addy driving the Range Rover. What the seven eighty? Pas de gaz, laissez faire, c'est ça. C'est ça qu'il dit. Donne pas de gaz, fais juste le laisser dessus, puis ouais. il, 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 il va avancer. Il est en train de se là. Il roule à vous prendre le. Ça ne sait pas ce que c'est en train de faire. Il cache, il faut ouais. plus bas, puis il faut pas. Ça va bien se mousser le gaz, là, puis laisse-les faire son affaire. Il ne réalise pas que ce qu'un char peut faire. Hein? Comme là, c'est ça qu'il dit, c'est un, un Jeep normal. Tu aurais deux roues d'un air, puis ça avance plus. Notre vieux Suzuki, là, ouais. si tu pas un air d'aller ici, ouais. tu peux pas le faire. Non, c'est ça, tu viens de te plus Non, mais ça, ça continue. Le hammer est comme ça, lui. Oui. Il est comme ça? Oui. Oui. Ton hammer ne passerait ici pas trop loin. Oui.
But again, guys, right now what we're seeing is we've only got braking with two wheels because we're cross axle, and we've only got steering with one wheel because it's all the way to tip. So it's all just going to take a little bit longer to do things. You might slide, but you're anticipating it. You're already on the brakes. Your steering is just going to take that much longer, so instead of turning it back, it's going to turn it over, right? Straight as you are. Look at that. Nice and higher. Nice and slow. Because you've only got the two wheels really braking you, and you can see you're coming down. Now, right here, as you come out, you're going to go all the way left, but not until you feel both wheels flat on the ground. And this is again where different traction types look. We're going to slide a bit, but we were already on the brake, so we didn't just lose control there. <laughs> The people for them going to the cottage means oh we get into the Mercedes SUV and away we go. It's not get out the kids in the snow chains and man we're going in the bush. And then just no gas as you go down here and off the brakes entirely. Take a nice little break. Oh, it's great, isn't it? And you can see it's not locked and just sliding. It will always follow that steering direction, which is what we're going for. We're going to go to the right here. We're going to go to the sand pit now. And the reason we're going to the sand pit is because of the terrain response. There's right and then the left as you come around this hill. I oh, know there's a, it was muddy. <laughs> <laughs> Same way we have been, you hold the brakes until you can see where you're going until we're over the lip a little left for me here. That's it, just let it creep forward a little bit more, a little bit more, a little left. You see the tire marks, when you're ready, off the brakes. <laughs> and you see to the right here, to the right. That's it, beautiful. That's it, that's it, nice and steady. And you know what, this is actually what I want to show you. Come all the way right here. Cause yeah. We're, yeah. What we're going to do now, and guys, this is cool. I'm more than happy we'll do it with, a, with a one or two of you. See it from the inside and from the outside, okay? Because what the terrain response does at the end of the day is it's it's all dependent on traction type, whether it wants the wheels to spin more or less. And we felt how it does it by taking away power, by changing the gear you start and things like that, right? Make sense? Yep. Yes, good. Creep on forward because you can see the lines we take to go up. In grass, gravel, and snow. This is the mode that is the most aggressive to stop any kind of wheel spin, okay? So just keep driving like we have been today. And you see it's going, it's going, it's going. But at this point, stop right there. And we need to... But you see, uh, put it in reverse actually. And then this is where it'll be good to see from the outside too. Reverse all the way back down. Keep going, keep going, keep going. We didn't dig any real holes did we no you see we didn't spin tires at all it's just our tracks are we're not stuck we didn't spin at all yeah it's very very clean or a lot yeah it's a big big difference isn't it? just those three